Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bashem, or Crocodile. That was
a few, but if you know that you can take a day off and you like, you know what, I'm going to go in anyway, now that's a different story, you know? But the Lord have the mercy on us, man, and we're thankful for that mercy. Because that mercy is what's going to be able to sustain us. All right? His grace is what's going to be able to take us. The word uh, mercy is a uh, facade. Facade in the Hebrew. And a great uh, Right? So those are the yeah. for the mercy and the grace of the house of God. Verse 1. Shall do no better work, it shall be a statue forever to the generations of all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your soul in the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, shall you celebrate your Sabbath. So you say it shall be to all of our generations. You see what I'm saying? So we be keeping this uh, day of atonement as a remembrance, as a day to uh, 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 admit our faults. You know, as a day to ask Yahweh Shem Al Shah for mercy, right? Because these people, they don't care about admitting their faults, right? They don't. They won't admit their faults in anything that they've done wrong, right? But we've admitted our faults to the Heavenly Father. We're asking Him for mercy. We're asking Him to look upon us with gentleness, man, right? Because He's a power of great mercy and He's long suffering. You see, so our, our power is going to have mercy on those men and uh, you know those women and children too who today have afflicted their souls, man. You got a small remnant in the world right now that on this day that's supposed to be out feasting in America, it's a small remnant of people that chose not to feast on a feast day, a Babylonian feast day, man. You see? I bring out the that even though it is a Sabbath, the scripture says in uh, Mark 3, verse 4, it says, He saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil? It's the same life or to kill it. They held their peace. So even though it's inside, we'd rather come out here and do good, man, right? and, 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 and fish for them, like, and call up to them, and bend them to the marriage, man, right? and that they might make me say, man, even though it is a, a day that we really live the day of the time, and it is a Sabbath. But it's a Sabbath. I'm going to put you back over the water, bro. I appreciate you. You know, that was just a Sabbath. The water, I appreciate you. Hey, it said that our Lord, uh, the Howard Shah, he worked on the Sabbath. It says, uh, they, they, they would, the truck, we could Pharisees would try to say, are you working on the Sabbath day? But he, he said, my father works, so I shall work. You, you see? And but, but this is the thing, the day coming where no man shall work, man. The day coming where we're not going to be able to out here and give you the word of the Heavenly Father, right? And look, you know, what, Delray, we, the last time we've been to Delray, what, two years ago? And these people still doing the same thing. So what do you think is going to happen? Judgment is going to follow soon, man. You know? You got it, brother. It's the book of John, chapter 9. Starting at verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh, when no man can work. That's right. The night cometh where no man can work, man. It, it's the times coming where we're going to see martial law breaking off in these streets, man. You're gonna see where uh, the Lord is gonna take his men off the streets. You're gonna see EMP attacks, man. You're gonna see them all these things, man. Your internet is gonna be turned off, man. The unicorn ain't gonna get pelted, man. You know? And so it, it, you, it, the time is coming where no man is gonna be able to work, man. And that, that's speaking about us doing this work. And also, you people out here, it says the grinder shall cease. Right. You see? So the time is gonna come where it's gonna be a completely different reality in America, man. All right? You got it, bro. But he pleases the actions chapter 12, verse 3. I'll go all the way down to 4. And that day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because there are few, and those that look out in the windows be darkened. And the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of grinding is low. And he shall rise up the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of the people shall be brought low. That's right. It says, the grinders shall cease, and your windows shall be darkened. That's talking about the, the future of for you people, man. All right, your future is going to be dark. Your future is going to be bleak. You're not going to be able to see your one front, one, to one foot in front of the other, man. All right? Because grievous times are coming to the streets of America, man. So right. get on me. You, you can live your lives and get drunk and smoke weed all you want to. The time's coming when who you think we call Jesus Christ is going to destroy this place. That's your right. beautiful Delray Beach is going to be left in thermonuclear missile dust. All right? That's what's coming to the state of America. So keep living your life. Keep thinking that everything is fun. But the time for judgment upon America is coming. We're getting tired of seeing tram trannies everywhere. We get, the Heavenly Father's getting tired of homosexuality running rampant in the earth. The Heavenly Father's getting tired of you people not giving him any reverence. 
So the time's gonna come since you didn't give me any, any praise, he's gonna give you all of his judgments, man. Amen. Amen. I got one, Isaiah 53, and I'm breaking this out because uh, the day of atonement, and we understand that the outside knew that ultimate uh, atonement for our sins. But in this day, it's a day that we reverence our Lord, all right? And, 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 you know, we show appreciation to the sacrifice that Yahweh Shai, you know, made up on that cross. This is Isaiah 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And it's speaking about Yahweh Shai. And he and, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, he was, and, and we esteemed him, him not, Sebastian. Verse 4, surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of, of the Most High and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So we, we was healed through, that, through the blood of Yahweh Shai. Uh, that that uh, being that he took on that cross, he took, he took on those sins for the nation of Israel. But you got the two-thirds of our people, you know, can't even reverence Yahweh Shai uh, on this day. Can't even... You know, sacrifice for, for the Lord, being able to go 24 hours without eating or drinking. That's, that's a small thing, you know. But I'm going to get this last one. It says, verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And Yahweh have laid on him the dignity of us all. So Yahweh shot to took on the sins of the nation of Israel as a whole. You know, right? even two-thirds of our people. You know, and, and that's why two-thirds of our people, you know, um, the Lord said, um, those that we those that I should not let rain over, bring hither the slave, you know, reference paraphrase. That's why it's going to be a whole lot of death because our sheep, they don't fear the Lord, all right? They, they, they don't um, keep his commandments. They, they, they don't even try to draw nigh to the most high. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 11, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the Son of Man is fully set in them to do evil. And that's why... I, these people are proud out here, man. Because Yahweh Shemal Shah is not judging us speedily, man. But there's going to be a time where all these wickedness these people are doing is going to come to an end, man. All right, verse 12. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his day be prolonged, yet surely I know that it be, I know that it shall be well with them that fear the Most High, which fear before him. Right. So, hey, though the wicked, like the scripture says, though a sinner do evil a hundred times in his day be prolonged, okay? Hey, those that are doing the ways of Yahweh Shemal Shah, it's going to be well with them in the times to come, man. And that's why it says in Isaiah, what, the 65th chapter, when all these people are hungry, all these people are thirsty, and the men of the Lord are going to be fed, man. They're going to be taken care of, man. It's going to be a time when it's going to be judgment in these streets, man. See how, look, hey, look how pretty it is all over this place, man. It's going to be gloomy, all right? You know, that's the time we're coming into. And yep. that's why, hey, you want to serve the Lord while you can, man. You know, while the opportunity is here. All right? Okay, you see why the Lord says, you got a right to get our work and labor of love. You know, the majority of this world, you know, is, is party and feasting and marriage. You know, giving in to marriage. You know, why Why you got the, you got that small remnant, you know, um, um, sighing and crying today. All right? Uh, um, fasting and praying. You know, um, asking for forgiveness for our sins and truth and sincerity. You know, because you got these Christians that are go to church and, and, and uh, pray to, to, to the white man, Jesus, and ask for their sins to be forgiven. But the next day, they're going back to smoking weed, committing adultery, you know, doing all manner of evil. So, and this is why the Lord is going to remember um, the, the prayer, the, the, um, the sacrifices of, of the righteous. Uh, can you have somebody? Uh, Amos chapter 5 verse 20 says, Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? And so the day of the Lord is going to be a, a terrible and dreadful day. You know, this is in, uh, in uh, Zechariah or Zechariah that people's eye sockets will be coming out of them. And they're going to be coming out of them. And they're going to be coming out of them. And they're going to be coming out of them. All right, a lot of these people are going to be, um, um, are going to be uh, warm by wild beasts, all right, uh, uh, by the sword, famine. So it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of death coming to America, man. But these people are, are too busy in that work. All right, it's better to be in, in the spirit of mourning than to be in the spirit of birth. Um,
Ecclesiastes, the uh, seventh chapter, verse two, and it reads, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. But that is the end of all men, and living will lay it to his heart. Back to the brother, man, it's better to be, so in the house of mourning, in the house of feasting, man, these people are in the house of feasting, man, they, they live it up all day, live their day, they, they get drunk, they, 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 they have a lot of fun on the day, but we're supposed to be mourning and in a tune of fun, that's right. That's right, because in the days of Noah, when Noah was out there prophesying, letting people know what to come, you know, just people cry. You know, they, they didn't believe so, and you know, Noah was uh, was making things up in their head. But when it soon came to pass, they was like, oh shit, now it's too late, you know? Pride going before destruction, man. So here you are, you walking out prideful, everything's, you know, life is in your hand, the world's in your hand, earth is in your hand. Yeah, right, there's a lot more to come. Yeah, you never seen most of it in front of your faces, but guess what? It'll soon come. Hey, and that's why I said, when Noah went into the ark, then they destroyed them all, roughly paraphrasing, man. Because they didn't believe Noah. And that's why Luke the 17 chapter says, as the days of Noah, so shall the days of the Son of Man be the Son of Man. Okay. It's Matthew 24 and 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. Right. And why is it written like that? Because when Noah went out there and prophesied to the people that it was going to rain water, nobody believed him. And guess what? The Lord has sent his servants, the prophets, are to prophesy and herald the coming of our Lord to tell you that our Lord ain't no so-called white man. To tell you that, hey, the day of the Lord is going to be darkness and not light, man. So guess what? Just like when Noah went into that ark, okay, when them doors were shut, that was it. This, it's going to be the same time, hey, when the Heavenly Father closed these, the spiritual ark, the spiritual gates of mercy, man. All right. All right. It says in the end of the you know, they, they were wandering to a fold, you know, trying to find the word of the Lord, right? right. Up to the west. So right. just like in times of Noah, when he was trying to get on that ark, he was too late. Uh, you did tell me that at yeah. the 11th hour, you have know, this rise to come in. But a lot of people don't be searching for that word of the Lord, searching for understanding, even be able to find it. Hey, hey, you know, you watch the apocalyptic type of movies, man. There's always a guy at the end of the movie, man, holding up a sign. I warned you, the end is coming, but people never take heed. And spiritually, that's what we're doing, man. We're blowing those spiritual trumpets, warning our people of the imminent destruction and judgment that's soon to come to Babylon, also known as America, man. And it says, and there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, upon the earth, the stress of nations, with perplexity, the sea, and the waves roaring, and, and the word there is perplexity, and the and word for perplexity, it says, uh, inability to deal with or understand something complicated or unaccountable. See, what the people that everybody hate the most are the only ones telling the people the truth. You know, so the time is going to come where they're going to be perplexed because as the scripture says, as a thief in the night, man, judgment is going to come upon this place, man. All right? They're going to be eating and, 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 and be marrying and giving into marriage as the scripture says when judgment falls upon these people. All right? They're going to be perplexed because one day everything is fine and then the next day all hell breaks loose. All right? That's perplexing. And then they're going to think about the men of the Lord that are out on the highways and byways when they were when they were in their liberty. All right? They're going to think about hearing us, man. All right? And they're going to be sorrowful, man. For well, at least two-thirds of our people, they're going to be sorrowful, man. You see, I'm sorry. Look at And see, this is how you know. This is how Satan work, man. We come out here and now they playing the music. That shit loud as hell. You know? They doing it. It's nobody even over there. But they're playing it intentionally because no, they know we bring out this word, man. You know? You is like you so-called black and black and Americans. You better get your shit together, man. Because the Lord about to judge this place. The right. Lord, you that too wicked to get your mind right, he's going to destroy your ass, man. That's right. You know? You got some brother. Uh, back up to Brother Point and uh, Ecclesiastes 8, and also the point about the brother going out from the apocalyptic movies. The person that's deemed crazy in those movies used to be right. We are the people that deemed crazy in this society. This is the talk about the foolishness of preaching, man. People are considered us fools out here. But this is Iraq, chapter 5, starting on verse 4. Okay. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm has happened unto me? For the Lord is long suffering, he will, he will in no wise let me go. Alright, we gotta understand that the Lord is long suffering, but he never forgets to. He's not gonna forget y'all sins, man. Especially for the ones that's not trying to um, get reparations for your sins or atone for your sins, man. He's never gonna forget that, man. Concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. And say not, his mercy is great. 
for he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation rests upon sinners. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed, and perish in the day of vengeance. In your security you want to be destroyed. When you think you're safe, the most safe, walk in your bunkers, or safe behind your four walls, that's when you're going to be destroyed, man. The Lord's hand is in a short way. He can't reach your ass, man, no matter where you at. That's, that's right, bro, because in the, in the times of Noah, those people that uh, thought themselves to be in good case, they thought they'd go on mountains or go on top of a big-ass animal like an elephant or a giraffe, and they were still consumed. And, and, and see, that's the thing. When it, well, what were they doing afterwards? They were banging on that door, man. Uh. They was running up to the ark. Hey, no, can we go with you? We believe you're not a rain coming. You see? Well. But it's, all, it's always when the hard times come is when people realize it's a reality, man. Uh. When the times of Noah, when they were flooding that earth, people out there banging on the doors. Can you imagine how many people was doing that, man? Well. So you people, at this time, you ain't gonna be able to bang on them doors, man. You gotta repent while the, while the, before the evil times draw nigh, man. I got a scripture. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians. Five and uh, one. But at the times and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape, man. So just like a woman, when I, she don't know when her water gonna break, she don't know when those those contractions gonna pop off, right? But just like it says, the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. It's gonna come up with you suddenly, man. You're not gonna be able to think of it. You're not look when things happen, what you have a reflex because something happens so quickly. But your reflex is gonna be death, man. Your reflex is gonna be uh having heart attacks when you see the Messiah pull up, man. He said he's coming as a thief in the night, man. That he's a he's an amazing power to let you know he's coming as a thief, right? And he's still gonna overtake you. He warned you that he's coming in that manner, man. This is the I this is the mentality of a true king. This is the mentality of a true God, man. But all of these people, they don't know who the true God is. You people serve all of these idol gods, but he's going to show and prove that he's the only living power, man. Right. It's Amos 4 and 6. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities. That cleanness of teeth is going back into their family. All right, Amos? Because when you ain't eating in, in, in a week or two, you ain't going to have no food to stuck up in your teeth. You know what I'm saying? It says... And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and one of bread in all your places, yet have ye not returned unto me, save your house and outside. Alright? Because even when this up, up and coming famine comes, our people still not going to seek the Lord. Okay? And the scripture says our people are like brute beasts. So brute beasts. So when, when this famine hit, our people are not going to seek the Lord. Our people are not going to resort to, to they're going to take matters into their own hands. The second entrance, the 16th chapter. Okay, people gonna be breaking into stores. People gonna be uh, running up into people's house, to try, trying to take all your goods. So e even after, even when all these plagues and pestilence hit, hit upon this world, our people still not gonna see God washing out shot. Right. Just quickly adding to what the brother said about you know it's gonna be as a woman, like a, a woman getting ready to give birth, man, and that's true. The the, the the more experienced parents who had more than one children, they're always prepared for that moment. You know what I'm saying? They always have their bags ready. You know what I'm saying? Everything ready just to get ready to go to the hospital. All right, that's gonna be the elect, man. All right, the elect is gonna be ready in that time. All right, we're gonna have, we're gonna be grounded. We're gonna have foundation, man. We're gonna have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to give us stability, man, as the scripture says, man. Uh -huh. You know, we're gonna be ready, but everybody else, they're gonna panic and they're gonna try to get things together and they're gonna mess things up, man. But as soon as we hear the horn, as soon as we, as soon as we see the signs of this place going down, we already ready. We've been ready. It's just like the uh, the uh, five uh, wise virgins and the five foolish right. ones, man. Right. Right. The, the five wise ones say, "Hey, man, like, no, you go go to them and sell and buy." Right. They they, they trimmed their lamps and they were ready right. for the bridegroom to make his return, man. But the five foolish went away, and what happened? Well, the the the, uh, the Lord came. Right. The bridegroom came back. So when the Messiah comes back, you gonna see, man. Time to use wisdom. This is the time to seek wisdom. Hakamah. 
this is the time to find wisdom, man. Because if you don't got that wisdom, you're going to be like those, it's the reason they call five foolish virgins, man. All right? To be foolish is a bad thing in terrible times, man. So the Lord is asking for our people to be wise, man. He's asking to bring, he's asking, he's giving you wisdom, man. He's laying it out uh, in so many ways. He's giving you his words. He's giving you the apostles and elders. He's giving you brothers in every respective city. You see what I'm saying? So he, you, you, wisdom is being poured out. The scriptures say that uh, uh, in the last days, truth shall, the truth shall flourish, man. You see? So the truth is flourishing, but you got to be a fool to not take heed to the truth, man. Uh, this is 2nd Ezra, chapter 5. Starting at verse 9, and salt water shall be found in the sweet, and all friends shall destroy one another. So like he was going in the second entrance, the 16th chapter, and when that lack of bread comes, and it says, oh, all friends are going to destroy one another, man. And that's the time you're coming into it. Your neighbor, those that you think that are your friend, and they're going to come into your house for a can of beans, man. And that's the, that's the seriousness in the scriptures, man. And that's why you got to fall upon, hey, you how about small shot, man? And I got another one. This is Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 2, or verse 3. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. And that's what we do, man. We're blowing the trumpet. Telling you that, hey, fire is going to rain upon Babylon the great. Whether you believe it or not. Romans the third chapter says, hey, for what if some did not believe, man? The, uh, the, the will of your house by is going to come to full effect. Whether you believe it or not. Verse 4, and whosoever hears the sound of the trumpet and take it not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Alright, and we're doing what we gotta do. The Lord command us to do what? To preach, to promise off, and that's what we're doing, man. So if you don't take heed, it's upon your own head, man. That blood is gonna be upon your own head, man. My son, my son was coming. Bring it out, huh? This is uh, a backup. He was saying it. Uh, truth going to spring out of the earth. This is Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. That's right. The, the, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, man. But right now, we live in a society where you see uh, homosexual men and lesbians everywhere, man. This place got to be destroyed, man. You see? So the, the Lord said his knowledge is going to fill the earth. The Lord is not okay with homosexuality. You can lie to your, your family. You can lie to your children. He's not okay with it, man. Right? That is of the devil, man. Right? So the Heavenly Father is going to do away with all you people that believe in that nonsense, man. You know? Uh, one of y'all said, Lord, focus on that. I just want the brother to get his scripture out. This is uh, Second Ezra 9 and 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I had told thee before, okay, and the brothers were talking about, you know, the day of the Lord will overtake these people as a thief. Why? Because they're not measuring the time. Okay, they're, they're not, um, they're not, they're not, um, they're not looking, they're not uh, parking into the sound of the trumpet. Okay, they're not, they're not watching the news. They're not watching alternative media. And that's why, this, that's why the day of the Lord will overtake these people because they're not measuring the time diligently. Okay, hey, if, hey, if, if, if the sea hip got implemented tomorrow, you know, hey, for, for the most part, brothers wouldn't be, brothers wouldn't be surprised. You know, yep. these are the times that we living into. You know, so you see wars and rumors of war. The Lord told us, told you in Matthew 24 chapter, to look out for those signs of famine, war, evil, and pestilence, and all those uh, prophecies are being fulfilled. And it says, verse two, then shall thou understand that it's the very same time wherein the highest will begin to will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars in the world, okay, and that was a 6.7 magnitude earthquake. I forgot where it hit, but that was that was today. China, you see, and, and, that, and that's, that's going on every day. But you people, y'all don't see it because because you're too busy partying and drinking. You're too busy uh, having your head up your woman's ass, and that, that you don't you don't take out time to seek out your own salvation. I'm sorry, over in China as well, in Chengdu, China, they have a, uh, basically, they have like, uh, they're afraid of another lockdown coming. So people are buying meat, stacking up their back seats, you know, uh, 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 buying all the rice, everything. They said at the end of the day, that was yesterday, I believe, the stores was uh, empty. All of the stores was empty. Everybody came buying something because they said last time, the lockdown was only supposed to last 48 hours, ended up lasting two months. 
You see, so the people are, uh, that, and that Esau sometimes Esau say stuff like that just to deplete the uh, the uh, food sources that they have on hand, man. So it's gonna come a day where you gonna walk into a store and the shelves are gonna be permanently empty, man. You know, that bright line and death yep. train, all the floods that's happening. You know. That's another way the Lord can take you out, man. By a damn train, man. We live next to the deadliest train in America for miles, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got some right, bro. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51. Ye stick, ye stiff neck, and uncircumcised in hearts and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did, so did ye. And that's what we see when we come out here, man. You know, we're giving you the truth, we're giving you the gospel, man. The good news of what's about to come. But like the scripture says, you resist the Holy Spirit. In verse 52, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Have, and they have and they have slain them and went sued before the coming of the just one. Right. The just one being who? Yeah, how was our Lord? Of whom ye did, of whom ye have been the betrayers. And murderers, right. And when you go further into the scriptures about how they stoned uh Stephen, if I'm not mistaken, man. Our religion is just to show you that hey, our people love darkness rather than light, right? And that's why their deeds are evil, like the scriptures say, man. And that's why two thirds of our people are gonna be destroyed, man. When they stoned Stephen, they said that uh they gnashed their teeth and they were cut to the heart. Yep, gnashed their teeth. You see right. what I'm saying? That's how these people act. When we bring out this word, and Hebrews 4 and 12 always comes to mind. They were cut to the heart, man, right? Their minds were severed, man. So that's why they, their spirits get, get cut up, man. So that's why they like, oh, uh, this is a problem. That's why they, they, if these people could, they would stone us, right? If they could get away with it, they would stone us, man. You see, they already been called the boys on us. We see them, they over there creeping, you know? But hey, Lord willing, we can get through these next 40 minutes and breeze on the part of this thing, man. You know, but we gonna keep telling these people, especially you so-called white people, Get ready for slavery, man. That's right. You know, we don't keep telling you because that's in the Bible. That's right. right. You know, we we can give me uh Jeremiah 30 and 16, man. You know, hey, the spirit bringing out. I was trying to stay away from talking about Esau control over there, man. You know, we got we got this. We got to do what it got to do. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Jeremiah 31 and 16. 30 and 16. I got you. Come. The Jeremiah 30 and 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thy adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Right. And so, so it says all of our adversaries, all these people that come against the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you're going to be devoured, man. And every one of y'all going to go into captivity, man. All right? Oh, yeah. it, it was okay when we were slaves. Hey, your time's coming next, man. That's all it is. Go ahead, brother. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, mm -hmm. and all they, it's lucky, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. That's right. All that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. So the Lord said, everybody that prayed upon us. And guess what? You so-called white people still praying on us to this very day, man. All right? You still reaping off of us. You, they get, they get, uh, the courts get money off of child support that they're doing for men. All right? You get, uh, the prison system. They get, they get money off of every inmate they have. Right? They, they still praying off of us in every single way. They get more money off of more dead bodies you got. You know, all of these, everything is fueled to pray off of our people. You Shit. see? Our, our, our daughters of Zion are the top missing individuals in Babylon, the great man. Mm -hmm. And if you got organ donors, you know, we're not going to get too much deep, so we won't get the challenge right. But anyways, nice you know, if you got things in the last order, life is taken, you get found with your organs That's missing, man. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Melanin is the top uh, selling ingredient. That's right, bro. Yeah. That's just higher than gold, man. $350 yeah. a gram, man. Yeah. Hey, right. brother, you on point. Uh, uh, if you, any brothers got that on your license, get, uh -huh. even though everything is all through the will and power of Yahweh Shemal Shah, but get that off your license. That organ donor, take that off, man. Uh -huh. All right, because they would, they, they, Esau come out and harm you just so he can get some organs you got. Uh -huh. You see, I took once I found that out, I took that shit off, man. Yo, what's the name, fine friend? Yep. And uh, let's say you see it quite often when somebody gets shot in the in the, in the hood or whatever like uh -huh. that. The ambulance will be right there. They yep. won't. They won't be. They, they. They won't rush to get you up out of there. They're waiting. They'll be pacing around. They'll be walking around. And you're looking like, yo, the brother is down there bleeding. But they're doing that for a reason. Yeah. And they. They. They into that. Those ambulance uh, EMT dudes. They, they. They. They'll. They'll be the ones who are part of the organ day. Uh, organ uh, donation. Uh, uh, circle, man. They showed you that on Squid Games, right? On Squid Games, they would take all the people that were dying, they was using them for organ harvesting, man. 
right? So they still using us for a prey in every single way. Y'all don't understand, our bone marrow is more dense, we're bigger, we're stronger, our melanin on that movie, Get Out, he said, I want your eyes, man. They want what we have, right? But because we the real kings of the earth, man. They want what we have, but they can't, they can't have it. But so they, they've had their turn, man. They've had their turn. Uh, give me that, uh, uh, they further the affliction. You know, you can grab yours, brother. Zechariah chapter 11, verse five, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And that's the spirit of Esau. Even until this day, it says we are yet this day in our captivity. But you ask the so-called white man, oh no, it, it was not us. You ask them, hey, what should happen to them that put us in the slavery? They'll tell them, it wasn't our fault, we didn't do that. And it says, and they, sell, and they that seldom say, blessed be the heavenly father, Yahweh, for I am rich, for their own shepherds pity them not. See, and that's the spirit of Esau Edom, man. It ain't about your skin color, and but the majority of those that do have that pink skin are Edomites, man. Hey, my man, if you had a question, my man, yo, my man, hey, hey, hat, you had a question? You read out of the Holy Bible. You read the Bible. You believe? You believe in God? Oh yeah. All right, so hey, you 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 uh, you know according to the Bible, he's about to come back and destroy America, right? Only America. Yeah. Well, it's going to be other parts, but America is, okay, let's get Revelation 18. America is going to be the example of the earth, what never to be like again, right? Because this place is the uh, epitome of wickedness in the eyes of the Heavenly Father, right? This place is Sodom, if you heard of Sodom and Gomorrah, it got destroyed due to their homosexuality. Egypt, right, for having the Israelites in slavery. This is the epitome of wickedness. Men are trying to be women, women are trying to be men. The Heavenly Father is upset with the state of this place. Uh, give me Revelation 18. Let me start at 2. Uh, look at Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. Mm -hmm. It's fallen. It's become a habitation of devils and hold every foul spirit in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Right. See, they ain't paying no attention. But look, that's why they're going to be destroyed. You that's see, right. that's why they're going to be destroyed. We tell, we tell them the truth of the Bible, but they don't want to listen, man. Right. So when they asses get killed, then it is what it is. That's right. You see? But they've been warned. It's especially you so-called white people. Y'all going into slavery. That's, that's right. That's right. what the Bible says, but they don't read that part. Your Christian pastors don't tell you that part, man. All of you other nations, if you're not an Israelite, you're going to be in chains, man. You see? But we, 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 talk, we read out the Bible. Oh, no, that's not in there. Oh, it's a joke. Oh, it's funny. We're going to see if you take the Messiah as a joke. Because guess what? He looked like us. And he's coming back to save us. Lord willing, we be those men. All right? You got it, brother. Revelation 13, starting at verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. That's right. He that leadeth into captivity, captivity shall go into captivity. captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Man. And the saints are the, are the Israelites that made a covenant to the Lord by sacrifice, man. The saints are alive today. These so-called blacks and fast Native Americans are the saints of the Lord, man. But this is truly for the elect, man. The elect of these so-called blacks and fast Americans, Native Americans. The rest of you, we really don't care about until you on the other side, man. Because you don't care about the Lord, we're not going to care about you. That's right. You know, and, and, and the Lord is just exacting judgment, as he's always done, right? But this time, this is where the Israelites are about to rule forever, you see? Because the times in past, you y'all you, thought, oh, those just some niggas, we don't care about them. Those some coons, those some monkeys, they, they don't matter. But we are God's chosen people. It's a reason that you can beat on us for centuries, and we still great, man. It's a reason for that. It's because we are God's chosen people. So that's, you know, that's when people want to walk away and they don't care anymore. God hasn't chosen. Y'all have let the 1948ers, the small hatters, tell you that they God's chosen people and nobody bats an eye. But when we come to tell you that, it can't be us, huh. right? But the Lord says he deals with the, the lowly and the meek, man. He deals with the meek of the earth. And guess what? Our people are the, are the meekest people. Even uh, through all the hell, our real talk, our people should be the most angry people on the state of the earth. But our people are so loving and show so much compassion that Esau walking in the neighborhood, they still don't even, they don't touch him. They don't do nothing to him. But let their brother come through. They want to harm him, man. Uh. But the time is going to come where the Israelites are going to show and prove that we're, the, we're God's chosen people. You got it. This is uh, Genesis chapter 49 and verse 8, or like verse 9. Judah is the lion's wealth. From the prey, my son, that were gone up. He stooped down. He counts as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? So this is talking about the tribe of Judah, you know, these so-called Negroes, okay? Being the head tribe of Israel, 
you, 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 you've gone up from the fray, man. Like like the brother said, our people have become complacent and they forgot they had enemies, man. Jake started to become cool and, and is all right with Esau and shit like that. Well, guess what? Yahweh is getting ready to raise up and rouse up Judah and all the other tribes following behind. All right, and, there, and there's going to be more civil unrest in this place, man. That's right. Jake's going to wake up to Esau's wickedness, man. Uh -huh. As they already are. Uh, Isaiah uh, 14 and 21 prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. You know, so that proves reincarnation, man. All right, uh, for the iniquity of their fathers. So, so, uh, so these so-called white people today, those are the same so-called white people uh, back in the day that, that was lynching, that, 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 that was killing the Israelites, man. All right, that's why it says also in Revelation one and seven, proving uh, reincarnation again. You know, those that uh, those that pierced him, man. So the Lord has come back for those that that, 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 that actually pierced him when he was on that cross, man. So it, it, it matters what you did in your past life, man. You know? yes. That's the so-called white man's favorite line, man. That wasn't me. I never owned a slave. Let's, for, let's forget about it. Yep, that, was my, that was my great, great grandmother, right? But you still reaping the benefits of that, man. That's another problem with these so-called white people, man. They have a lack of accountability, man. Just like Eve, man. But yet they know, man, they are their forefathers. They are their great grandfather coming back in the reincarnation, man. man. Reincarnation is biblical, man. Hey, you on point with something, though. You said the lack of accountability is just like Eve. And we know that Eve and serpent are the serpent are built together. Uh -huh. So that lack of accountability is on both of them. They act the same way, man. Uh -huh. But I want to get that revelation for Q real quick. This is Revelation 1 and 7. It's a, I started 6. It says, And hath made us kings and priests unto the Most High and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever, amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so are mine. Right, so every every eye shall see him, man. So everybody is gonna is gonna witness, you know, if you if you hear, you know, everybody's gonna witness, you know, uh the, the day of the hour uh, of the hour shall return. Man. Uh -huh. You know, everybody's gonna witness it. I was also gonna think it too. Everybody that, that's living on these islands. You know, or, or Beverly Hills, California, they, they, all, all those so-called white people that, that's living it up, they all they all living deliciously off the backs of us, man. 400 plus years of, of free labor, man. You're gonna be, you're gonna be, that, that's generational wealth, man. And, and that's why you so-called white people got a place. Bring it up. Obadiah 1 and 9, and thy, and thy mighty man, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mountain of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. You know, hey, this is going, this is going. Esau is also going to be cut off uh, in the kingdom of heaven. After a thousand years of hardcore slavery, hardcore bondage, they're going to be bundled up in the, in the bundle of fire, and they're they going to be exterminated. Okay, and it says, it says, uh, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Okay, Jacob's name later got changed into Israel. Okay, so, so, and look what's been going on, you know, for generations, since, since the beginning, really, since Cain and Abel, all right, uh, um, and then uh, um, Isaac, all right, and, and, and Isaac and Jacob, you know, uh, Slot, uh, Esau, Esau and Jacob, Slot, Slot, the slip of the tongue. Con. That's right, Esau, the, the time is coming where the Lord is showing all, of the, all of those uh, past uh, things that are written in this book. It's not all making sense, man. It's coming into fruition. All of the prophecies that are written in this book, right? The scriptures, uh, give me uh, Isaiah 34 and 16. Uh, uh, yeah, you had the hands from the Salakim, bro. You know, uh, but the, all of these prophecies in, in this book don't, don't come to pass, man, right? It was all right when everything bad that was written in this book was happening to us, right? So now, oh, we, we just as the bad came, we're expecting the good, and all the bad is gonna come to all of our enemies, man. Right. Go ahead, brother. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and seek, read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. The book of the Lord is the Holy Bible. Everybody knows that, man. It says and read. And when you read, you got to comprehend, man. You see? Go ahead, brother. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it had commanded, and his spirit it had gathered them. That's right. So it says none of these shall fail. Not one of these prophets, not one. That's a power. That, now that's a God, right? When he says not one of the things he said is going to come, uh, uh, everything he said is going to come to pass. Every stone going to be on turn. That's right, bro. Uh -huh. Everything that he said written in his book is going to come to pass, man. 
all right? So there ain't nothing, ain't, ain't nothing we can do about that, right? We At the end of the day, we, you want the, you, the bad happens, now it's time to reap the good, right? But at the same time, all you so-called white people that reap the good, it's time for you to reap the bad now, man. The scriptures say, for what a man soweth, so shall he also reap, man. You see? So it's time for you to reap slavery. It's time for you to reap destruction. It's time for you to reap all of the things that we've been through, man. You see? Yeah. We, 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 this is the nitty gritty of the Bible, man. Right? This is the uh, the deep things of the Bible to understand that the Heavenly Father has a chosen people according to Psalms 147, according to Amos 3, right? Uh, 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 so many scriptures. Uh, uh, Ezekiel 25th chapter, man. Right? It's so many scriptures outlaying that we are his chosen people, man. You got it, brother. Isaiah 55 and 11. It says, So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So the Lord's word is not going to return back to him void. Like the brother said earlier, all these preachers are going to be fulfilled, man. That's Everybody right. Maybe the prophecy be fulfilled, has been fulfilled, or will come to pass, man. All right, just like what happened with uh, Samuel, it said how the Lord made none of Samuel's words fall to the ground because Samuel was a property of us in our shot. Just like all these scriptures that were fall to the ground. That's right. That's a bad scripture. So that, that's like, you know, our words, these words are taken off, man. You see, these words are taken off. It's not like what we're saying. That's what we said. None of them fell to the ground, which means they, they had the effect of the purpose that the Heavenly Father intended, man. And now he said his word is going to go out throughout the whole four corners of the earth, and that's when the end is going to come. So we're pushing his word, and we're pushing his vibration until our Lord arrives, until he takes us off these streets. And that's the thing. Even after the Lord takes us off the streets, that's when we're going to be spiritually activated to be able to have those spiritual powers, Lord willing, man. All right? So we're still going to be doing the work of the Lord. We're just not going to be out here teaching you no more, man. Right? We're going to be, Lord willing, we be those, man. We're going to be healing people. We're going to be showing people the way. The people, the believers, let me say that, because for all the wicked, we, we done talking to them. Right? When we out here now, we really only fishing for the elect, but we still talk to the wicked for edification. In the time of Jacob's trouble, the time for talking to the wicked is going to be over with, man. That's right, man. We'll be coming up trying to ask questions, man. Jake gonna turn into a fucking what? What you gonna be like? The mind? That's what they call it. Like, oh yeah, mind. 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 They ain't gonna be telling you shit because you will to have the opportunity to get right, but choose not to, man. Bring it up. Second uh, Peter three and nine. The Lord is not slack mm -hmm. concerning his promise, as some man counts slackness. See, and the Lord said he's a man that he shall not lie. So the Lord is not. He ain't, he ain't like your boy in the world who say, "Hey, can I borrow something and, and I'll pay you back and never pay you back?" No, the Lord is, is always comes through on his promises. All right, and it says, "The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance." And we know that only only the one third of of, of the Israelites is going to come back and and repent. Verse ten, but the day of the Lord will come. As a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass that away with a good. great noise, that the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And that's another promise from the Lord, that this place is going to be utterly destroyed. All right, Malachi 4 1, it shall leave me the root of branch. So, so you know, yo, downtown area, it's going, to, it's, going to be, it's going to be turned into dust. Okay, uh, New York City, the Statue of Liberty. All right, you go to Chicago with all these uh, monuments, all buildings, and sky, skyscrapers, all ah. that shit is gonna be destroyed. That's you right. Know? And you can always tell when uh, Amalek, you can always know an Amalekite when they see the sign. That's Amalek, right? There. Amalek. Yep, yep. That she is. Always, you can always tell Amalek when they look at the sign. I heard it. She said Israelites too. Yep, yep. She know who we are. See, they see tribes of Israel, and they've been told that that's them. You see, so when they see Amalek, right, they they know that something something ain't right. You know I mean, when they say they don't see Amalek on there, they don't see their their uh, lineage on there. Right? When they and see they, when they see it's more than Judah and Levi. Yep, yep. God. What's, what's this? God. You get educated. That's right. right. You get educated right now. Just and that's the power of this sign, man. Ezekiel 37 chapter. This sign is so powerful because even if you don't hear what we say, you're gonna read the words on this sign. That's right. Uh, can somebody get that real quick? Ezekiel 37 and uh, 15. It's like surprise. You're surrounded. Yep, yep. <laughs> You know, hey, they've been calling you, they've been calling you black. You ain't black. You are brown. You are the Israelites according to the Bible. Your car is black. Your shoes be black. You ain't black, man. All right? You are the Israelites. You're brown in complexion. Stop calling yourselves black. They're doing that to disrespect you and demean you. 
right? Go ahead, brother. Ezekiel 37 and 15. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for the for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel his companions. Right, this is about the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, right? He says, take a stick. And when you go into that word stick, it goes into a plank, man. All right, and a plank is a piece of wood. You know, we always use the example when you uh when you have uh men that were uh uh like if you have pirates, right? And then what do they tell the person that walking on in? They say walk the plank. You see? So that this plank, right, this stick is how uh we going our brothers gonna be reunited on the piece where everybody can see who we are, man. Right? The the, the Lord says, Your teacher shall not be removed into a corner anymore. You're gonna be able to see this truth out in the open now, man. Verse 17, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thy hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak of thee, saying, Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Right, uh, what, will thou not show us what thou mean about these? Like, you see these names, you're like, what does this mean? You know, I, I remember when I first uh, came into the truth, I put on Facebook, you know what I'm saying, I put this, this list on there. And she was like, where did you learn this from? Where did you get this from? Right? You know, I, I, said, the, I said the Bible. <laughs> that was my answer. But see, that's the Bible. But you got to take the Bible with spiritual understanding. Right? When you put these things together, when you when you connect all the dots, the uh, secular dots and the spiritual dots, you get to see that these are the people of, of God. These are the chosen people of the Heavenly Father. Right? All of these people that are on this sign, man. Right? So what does that mean by these? You're, you're not black. You ain't Hispanic, you ain't Native American, you are the Israelites, the princes of the power, man. That's right. Go ahead. Verse 19, say unto them, thus saith the Lord power, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. See, he said they shall be one in my hand, right? Because now, ultimately, we're in the Yahweh Shah's hand. But he, he's reconnecting our brothers, man. Because they told you that so-called Mexicans weren't us. They told you that so-called Native Americans weren't our people. We're all the same people. We're brothers. We're all the same people. They told you, you know, we, we be making a little jokes because uh, Haitians, they say to the, the Judite in America, they got black American, right? But those are your brothers, man. Those are your brothers. These, we are all brothers being reunited under the banner of the Most High, man. Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 33. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel, the children of Judah, which were oppressed together, and all that took them captives, held them fast, they refused to let them go. You see that? So the Lord says the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. So you so-called blacks and you so-called Hispanics and Native Americans, y'all all been through the same tribulation, man. You all got the same problems, starting with the so-called white man. That's your number one problem. We got to get rid of his ass, man. We got to get rid of the red man walking the earth, man. Is that the man? You let the so-called white man's rule in the earth? Oh, this place gotta go down, man. This is Jeremiah 50 and verse 4. It says, in those days and in that time, said the Lord, talking about these times we're in right now. It says, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping, they shall go and shall seek the Lord their power. This prophecy is being fulfilled right before your eyes today, man. Today is the Day of Atonement, all right? And the Day of Atonement is the day to do what? To weep and to mourn before your sins, before Yahweh shall shy, right? Guess what? Both Northern and Southern Kingdom are doing that right now. We're both going towards Yahweh shall shy, weeping, man, seeking our Lord. Verse 5, they shall ask the way to Zion with their faces through the word, saying, come and let us join ourselves to the Lord, Yahweh shall shy, in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten, man. All right? And that's what we're doing. We have our faces towards Jerusalem when we throw up them prayers. We have our faces towards Jerusalem when we give the glory to the Lord, man. We got our faces to the word, seeking out by smell God, both the Lord and the Southern Kingdom. That's right. And today, the day of atonement, hey, it was the, not only are we supposed to always face the East, but today was the perfect day to face the East, man. Today was the day we you, you, you laid your faults and your sins before the Heavenly Father, right? And you said, Lord, forgive me for that, man. Look, you know, brothers, today was that day where you, you can really go into your mind and be like, man, I, I did some wicked shit. You know, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy on me. Because now we know that that's not weighing us down. He's now giving us an opportunity, right? Uh, somebody Google opportunity for me. Clean slate. A clean slate. The Lord said he's going to blot out our sins, man, and start remember them no more, man. Right? So he's giving us a chance to start all over. You know, 
Atonement, and that's the thing. We have a day of atonement yearly, right? So every time, so all of you men out there that are still half stepping, that still be like, oh, uh, uh, I don't know if the Lord dealing with me. This is your time to start a fresh, man. You know, like whoever got it. Uh, opportunity is a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. A chance for employment or promotion. A chance for employment or promotion, right? Employment goes into servitude, right? We are employed by your high boss, your The scripture says, Jonah said, this is our occupation. You see? What is thine occupation? He said, I'm a, a servant of the God who made the dry sea and the land, the dry land and the sea. You see? So, the, uh, or promotion. And Lord willing, we get our promotion soon. Lord willing, because everybody is nice to get a promotion. Lord willing, we be the kings and rulers of the earth. Lord willing, we uh, get crowns on our head. Lord willing, we be dressed in them white robes, man. That's a promotion, man. Uh, I looked up. I looked up. What does clean slate mean? It says to forget all the things that have happened or been done and start doing something again. To start again from the very beginning. But then when we start going off, we were putting this flesh, man. All right? So the Lord's going to bring us back to that, all right, and give us his word in our inward parts. We're going to have a clean slate, and we're going to be without fault, man. Right? Because that's why he says, even, even now, he says that we shall, no, they shall be virgins, and then that mouth shall be found no guile, man. That means you got a clean slate in the eyes of the Lord because you're not deceiving the people, you know? Uh, so, so you know, we went into the word of uh, opportunity for employment. You know, right now we're being employed by Yahweh Shemel well Shai. We are the servants of the Lord, man. Okay, and that's why you got to continue fighting in the truth because you will be rewarded. It's not like serving Esau. You know, you labor and he gives you a little reward. We're doing a little labor and Yahweh Shemel Shai is going to give us a great reward. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know, if your labor is not in vain in the Lord, man. All of our works that we're doing, all the sacrifices that we're making is not in vain, man. You know? So we gotta continue to move and grow in this thing, man. And we still wait for that big payoff. You know, because we work for Esau, he's gonna pay you. Uh, he's gonna pay you. You know, uh, like kinda kinda like when the work is done, you know, but that's how you know we still labor, man. Come on, bro. You know, because the Lord he, he's blessing us with wisdom now to this but we're all doing that yeah, big payoff, which is salvation. Uh, and the brothers going into, we all waiting for that big payoff. Even when I was in the, in the world, I never understood the term of being saved. What the hell are you saved from? Huh? You know, you're still here, bro. The Lord hasn't come yet and destroyed this place. How the hell you know you're saved? Like the brothers going into um, a clean slate. You know, we want our, our, our to be blotted out. We want the Lord to take a write out and, and mark all those lists. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19, repent ye therefore. Be converted, change, change your inner parts, be circumcised. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The Lord's going to be a refresher out to the elect, one third of the nation of Israel. And the Lord's going to be a, a, a reaper, a, a farmer, those who crush grapes to two thirds of our people. And the rest of the other 72 nations that according to captivity. I got a scripture. This is uh, Romans 8 and 24. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is not seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doeth he hope yet for? But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it, man. So we're waiting for that salvation. We're waiting for the Messiah to come and get us, man. These people that don't really believe that, they, they don't even believe the Messiah is coming. You see? So they don't even know, they don't even, you know they're not waiting, man. All right? Where's the promise of his coming? It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. See that spirit, uh, the brother of my son was talking about the comforter, right? That spirit help with our infirmities, man, right? It gives us that comfort that we need to get day to day, man. The Lord gave us the spirit, even though this weak flesh today, he gave us the spirit to come out here and do this, man. It says, for we know not all what we should pray as we ought, but the spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Sometimes you don't even know what to pray for, right? But the, the, always, the fail safe is always pray for uh, 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 wisdom. You pray for wisdom, and you pray for your brothers, man. You pray for the apostles and the elders. It says, uh, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of the Most High. And we know that all things work together for good to them that, are, that love the Most High, to them who are called according to his purpose. 
You see? So brothers, the Lord willing we those men, we have been called according to his purpose. And so now the Lord is going to be making intercession for us. He says for the saints, man, Yahweh Shai is making intercession for us to his father right now, man. Our people, it's time to get your lives right because the Messiah is coming, man. And it's not going to be any excuses. You can't say, oh, they didn't teach me that in Christianity. You can't say, oh, they didn't teach me that in Buddhism. You can't say, I never heard about that, man. Because then you're going to be lying, man. You know? That's a dude. Hey, you see the, you see this. Five o'clock shadow. Somebody told me that you can't ask the Lord for patience. Don't pray to the Lord for patience. But in the book of James, it tells you, if any man lack, ask of the Alvash Mashah, which is given to all men liberty. You know, so just to show you, hey, these people in the world don't got it, man. And that word patience goes into endurance. Right. That's 
Let's press in right up. 